In our last sharing, we looked a few things, and one thing that stood out is that we are chosen. One thing that we noted out in my last sharing, we're just doing a brief a recap, it's that we are chosen. And when we are chosen of God, God prepares the way. And we realized, because we looked at a few examples of men of faith, like Abraham, like Gideon, like Daniel and his friends, like Joseph, and the list goes on, that in their situation and circumstance, as God called them out, he had some assignment for them to accomplish. And besides having a road plan of what they were to accomplish, and besides the assignment being ordained of God, the creator of heaven and earth, it wasn't without challenges and obstacles. Bwana Tukuzwe. It wasn't without challenges and obstacles. You know, some circumstances that they would like, is God here? Is God in this? Is this God? Even without having heard so clearly from God. The fact remains, they were chosen and they were assigned some task to accomplish. See Moses of, of old? He's called, he's given an assignment, but it wasn't without challenges and obstacles and circumstances that the, he would encounter and even to the point of giving up. So we are not exceptional, brothers and sisters. We are not exceptional. When Christ Jesus asked the saints of old, the disciples, to go in the upper room and receive power and be commissioned to go forth more so. We have received power, the power within us, upon our confession that Christ is Lord, that Christ died and rose again. We received an anointing, an impact in us, the presence of the Holy Spirit within us, who testifies, even as he testified during the times of saints who have gone before us. That it is doable. That the task is achievable. Without comfort being comfort. With challenges or without challenges. The assignment was achievable. And we are not exceptional even this time round. When Jesus Christ commissioned me and you. To go. Amen. When Jesus commissioned me and you to go. When God chose me and you. He has an assignment for all of us. And we can't miss it. Because it is to the lost. It is to bring it's to accomplish his purposes. Because from the Garden of Eden, God has been in the business of bringing back man to himself. And as I've, I've, I've said, uh, as sin came in through one man, and all men were condemned, and so the grace of God the mercies of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God towards us who sinned came through one man, Jesus Christ. And so we have an assurance that 
he is with us. And that what he has promised, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, stands yea and amen. Bona sifuwe sana. And so when we, when we are reminded that we are chosen and that we are special, a royal priesthood, and that we are destined for greatness, and we are destined, we have an assignment to accomplish, I am sure we will not go without excuses just like it was in time of Daniel just as it was in time of Moses, just as it was in time of Gideon, we will have some excuses. But that doesn't stand from us accomplishing that what uh, God has assigned to us. Seeing that separated man was broken. And through Christ Jesus, we are reconciled back to God. I like the song that we have just sung, Ameripa Garama, Garama Imelipo. I don't know how you, you took that song, Garama Imelipo, Amelipa Garama. I'm just imagining, you know, the way you would... Um, Go to a supermarket. Go pick everything that you, you desired. But along the way, you are like, I would have picked this one. Were it not. I would have preferred this. Were it not. I would have picked this and that. Were it not. Of my pocket. Just to go at the paying cash counter, and then you, you, someone just says, "Hey, could you kind? I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that." So, huh? Seriously? Seriously? Oh she, oh she, I wish. Or you are in a matatu, and it's like um, you try to look for your wallet. And it's like you changed and you never picked. Ukiingia, ukitoa, unatoa, receipt. And it's like, kajasho kebamba, kanaanza, kukutoka. And then from behind, unasikia, uh, that one, uyo, yes, yake ni melipa. Bwana sifuwe sana. You feel good. Garama imelipwa. That song was powerful. Garama imelipwa. Today, as uh, we look into the word of God, I want us to look why we are born again. Why are we Christians? Is it possible to live a Christ-like life? And I was not able to give a, a title of my message, but you can look for the heading as we go along. But I want us to read from the book of John chapter 15 and verse 13. No one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. No one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. Greater love. And that's what God did for us. That's what Christ Jesus did for us. Because he loved us so much, just as John 3.16 says, that it wasn't in God's will that any man would miss heaven, that any man would perish, that any man would miss the narrow path. 
because he loved us. And that's why, though through Adam, man was declared sin or son, son, sin entered to, to human beings, but then through Jesus Christ, we are able to receive or we are able to be reconciled back to God. And so, Jesus Christ, besides being the King of kings, the Lord of lords, one who deserved not to experience any pain, any shame, any guilt, but he took it upon himself that we could be saved, that we could be redeemed, that we could be, a time like now, have an opportunity to be reminded that we are born again, that Christ Jesus loves us with an everlasting love, that God will not leave us nor forsake us, that the calling of God in us is God ordained. And that helps us to embrace God's love, God's unconditional love. And when we look into God's love, I just want us to imagine, do we love ourselves? Do we love those around us? Do we love our neighbors? How do we treat those people who hurt us seriously? There are those of us who, by God's grace, you are in business and you have business partners or you have business, what we call business rivals. You bring this speaker, you bring this kind of, you start making this kind of pulpit, the market does so well, you know. There are these people in your office or in our offices and it's like they have nothing good in us and not because of anything just because we stand for truth just because we are born again just because we love God just because we look unique how, how do we handle them how do we take them? Those people who hurt us, you know, the neighbor. And they have nothing good. They see no good, even as much as. And as men, we are prone, just as men of old. You remember Moses telling God, Mimi kuongea, sijui mimi nina. Excuses. It's like, no, God. This one, no. And it's like, you don't have room to love them. But now you can imagine you are condemned. You were condemned. You were destined for destruction. But Jesus Christ loved you so, so very much that he redeemed us. He reconciled us back to God. And more so, we need to show love. As we look into the word of God, I, 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 I like the prayer points uh, for today. Getting deeper into the word of God. Dwelling in the word of God. And as we get the word of God, the abundance of our heart will flow. That what will come out of us. Through that whatever circumstances we are in, we'll be able to show unconditional love. We'll be able to love them and we'll be able to witness to them. Witnessing through love. Witnessing through love. And challenges come. In the past uh, few uh, days, I've been looking into the life of Paul, 
through the book of Acts and through, through the book of Romans. And you see Paul being accused by his fellow Jews, by his fellow tribesmen, by his king, king. He's, he's being accused. And not just being accused in the Nyumbakumi man or woman or in the chief's place. No. He's accused and taken to court just for being good. But even in the process, he stands preaching the gospel. He stands for truth. So we'll not be exceptional when it comes to displaying the unconditional love to other people. When we come to actualizing the word of God, the, the overflow of the word of God in us will be tested. sana will be tested. And so, since all of us has gone astray because of sin, and we deserved punishment, and separated from God, but God's grace, that sin, that situation, and that circumstance would tend to separate you from that particular person that you need to stand so that through your actions, through your deeds and doings, through your actions and through how you respond to how they behave, they see God in you. They see the faithfulness of God in you. We need to display unconditional love. Loving unconditionally. Just the way you'd, you know, appreciate the beggars. You know, people who are just begging, you know. Those people who nag. Those people who don't deserve. Those people who feel like because of the condition that they are, they are in, you need to to appreciate them, just the way that you would appreciate me as one of the pastors here. Amen? The same way you'd appreciate, or God, uh, 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 God expects of us to love those people that, you know, don't see any good in you. God expects of us loving with your whole heart and going an extra mile to show love by being kind, by being there for them. The love of God by God's grace has been shared abroad to all of us. And so if you are the agent, if you are the vessel that God has to choose to show his love to someone, and that someone is that particular person who nags you now and then. Is that your neighbor? Amen? There are those people that you come across. Amen? We mostly uh, go to prison to share the word of God. And in prison we have a number of categories. We have people who never committed any sin but they are pushed to prison because of malice, because of greed. They are pushed to prison. Like on Friday, uh, we went to committee and we supported one, one man who has been in prison for 18 years for no apparent reason, for false accusation, but he stayed in prison for 18 years. And as we took him home, you would see how, you know, the, the, the neighbors, how happy they were. 
all neighbor, most of his neighbors came. And they were, they, they, they were so happy that he has come back. And every other moment he would try to say or to imagine of what took him away from his family for 18 years he talked of God's forgiveness how God has dealt with him for the last 18 years you know looking around his neighbors he would stand a bit younger than them it's like this so and so but you are older than me. But then, it's like I was older than you, but then now you, you look older than me, but you are younger than me by the time I left. And then it's like, who's this? Or oh, you never left this one. No, but he looks older than me. I mean, the grace of God. And so forgiveness stood such kind of a person it's only god's love that can hold such a person when he goes back home he doesn't go to revenge but he sees the grace of god in him and the assignment that god has given him while he has been in prison and no wonder maybe that's why in Matthew chapter 25, verse 36, God talks of, I was in prison, I was sick, I was naked, I was a stranger, I was thirsty, I was hungry. And you see, people can behave differently when they are in such a situation. The Lord Jesus Christ is pleading with us by his Holy Spirit to let him manifest his glory in us. Would you allow the Holy Spirit, would you allow God to manifest his Holy Spirit, to manifest his glory through you by loving others unconditionally? And as, as they say, use your voice for kindness. Use your voice for kindness. Use your eyes for compassion. Use your hands for charity or for love. Use your mind for truth and your heart for love. Use your voice for kindness. Use your ears for compassion. Use your hands for charity, your mind for truth, and your heart for love. The other thing is prayer. In order to respond to the call of God, in order to do that what God calls us to stand for, we must be people of prayer. Luke chapter 5 and verse 16 helps us. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus prayed. And if he who knew no sin, then a dispute also, no, uh, Luke five sixteen kindly, if it's okay. Yet he often withdrew to deserted places and prayed. Thank God we are in a moment where we seek God prayerfully. That we can keep off from food or other things to seek God in prayer. Prayers helps us because through prayer you are able to commit that particular issue to God. You are able to let God, let God release that burden to God. And you are also through prayer able to communicate with God. And even through prayer, you are able to hear God. You are able to surrender that situation to God. You are able to hear from God. And you are able to have a moment for God to speak to you. Jesus took time to listen from God through prayers. Jesus took time uh, to pray. That even those who were around him couldn't, he took time to pray. 
And indeed, when you are concerned about someone, you can only have a personal relationship with someone if you spend time with them. When you spend time with someone, you are able to improve your relationship. And when they are so much against you then, when you take time with God in prayer, then God is able to deal with them. The Bible has a lot of illustrations like the woman who nagged the judge. He went, kept, kept on going for please until it's like, okay, go, receive. And so when you commit that particular person to God, that particular issue to God, then God deals with it. Prayer is key. Prayer is key. It is spending time uh, with, with the Lord. We give it, uh, we take it as a priority. Taking time with God, we give it or we take it as a priority. It's not a by the way. Praying is not a by the way. Praying, it is not only when you are overwhelmed with situations and circumstances. When you are in trouble, that's not the only time to pray. You can pray even when you are in your comfort zone, when you, you don't have issues that are uh, uh, bothering you, you can pray. Because God is always with you. God loves to hear your voice. It's good to talk to God daily through prayer. Buona sifu sana. I've mentioned about forgiveness. As I talked about our friend, we, we escorted. So forgiveness is key. In the book of Luke, chapter 22 and uh, verse 24, Jesus said, Father, as a dispute also arose among them, as to which of them was to be regarded Luke 22, verse, 20, verse 24. So, a dispute arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. Dispute. It's like who will be regarded? Who will be considered? Amen? Who will be considered? It's like we want our rights first. Me first. No, it's you who did it. No, I deserved better recognition. So there is bitterness. And so when you let go and let God through forgiveness, then we are able to move forward. So forgiveness is key. When I look into the life of Paul, you see a lot of forgiveness. He couldn't, he could actually, he couldn't progress. He couldn't progress. But in every encounter, because he had let go of those of his accusers, God renewed his strength. Amen? The other thing is humility. Humility. And we can see in the life of uh, Stephen, when he was accused and stoned to death, he humbled himself. Humble yourself before the Lord. He will lift you up. Humility is key. Because without humility, we'll not be able to go far. Mark, you can look into that as we look into the book of Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Jesus Christ humbled even to the death at the cross of Calvary, a shameful death. 
For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. But through humility, we are able to serve. We are able to witness. We are able to go to an extra mile. Humility. Being humble is putting God and his will first. Being humble. It is putting God and his will first. So you consider that what pleases God first. That what would Jesus, as they say, what would Jesus do in such a situation? When you consider God's situation, then you are able um, to stand or to go forth. To treat and to love others as you would like others to treat you. That is humility. Because through humility, you are able to respond to situations or to other people's situations without considering yourself first. But considering that the outcome, the end result, or considering how God would respond, or how, you know, seeing, considering how God would be pleased through your action, humility. And doing all this, you can't do all this without the word of God. And today's leading uh, 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 key verses uh, in, in our prayer uh, for today, it's about the word of God. Getting deeper into the word of God, taking time with the word of God. Luke chapter 2 verse 45 and to through to 46. When they did not find Jesus, they found him, you know, for after three days, they found Jesus in the temple. Those are Jesus' parents. That, that means Jesus desired to hear more or to be found in the temple, listening. The word of God stands out. Without the word of God, we would, we, we would be malnourished. The word of God. Loving the word of God and taking time to study the word of God. Jesus Christ, even after uh, taking time in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, he was tested by the devil. And we are not exceptional from being tempted. We are not exceptional, you know, from coming across challenges that would try to counter challenge the truth with the word from the word of God. And so when you have the word of God deposited in you, dwelling in the word of God richly, when the word of God is in you, then you are able to witness or to respond to a situation through the word of God. Just as the word of God says, the word of God says in this situation, the word of God says in this situation. If we had more people grounded in the word of God, the scenarios of whatever, yes, we would not be experiencing such. Dramas that we often see we will not be experiencing such when we are grounded in the word of God. When we know the truth of the word of God, truth that sets men free. The word of God stands out. And so I would urge, even if it is reading, taking time to read, to study, taking time to listen to the word of God. You can have an audio Bible up in your phone and you take time to listen to the word of God. 
Bwana asifiwe sana. Na kama serious 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 siri hauna unione kando. Bwana asifiwe sana. Because when you listen and then now you come to look into it or you look into it as you listen Bwana asifiwe sana. It becomes a little you move a little bit faster. The other thing is compassion. Bwana asifiwe sana. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. When he saw the clouds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When he saw the multitude, Bwana asifiwe sana, Jesus was moved with compassion. I don't know what, when you see the lost, when you see the lost, how do you treat them? When you see the lost, when you see people who are lost in sin, how do you treat them? Through compassion, being sympathetic, being uh, sympathetic, and concern through the suffering that they are going through. Compassion helps us. Compassion means being sympathetic, sympathetic and concerned for sufferings. Being compassion. I could jag to Christmas. Do, 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 do you know Father Christmas? Santa Claus. Father TRM. Anakua ni mutua compassion. Siku ya Christmas anaenda hapo na sweets. Like people need to have fun, to have merry, and so Santa Claus is there. So we need to uh, be compassionate, to be merciful for those who are suffering. And through such acts, we are able to draw men who are in this scripture, people who are humiliated, people who are lost through compassion, we are able to win them to Christ. We are able to minister to them. The other thing is seeking God, seeking the will of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, as the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse, 20, uh, verse 33. Seeking the kingdom of God, seeking the will of God, seeking what would God desire us to do. We must make the kingdom of God our priority in our life, in our family, in that what we are called to do, in our place of work, in our place of uh, business, in, 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 our, in, in our neighborhood, in our families. We should make the kingdom of God, the will of God, a priority. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 9 reminds us, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, making God's will a priority. And so, what are you doing to make God's will a priority in your life? What are we doing as a church to make God's will as a priority in the church? I just love Bishop's endeavors, taking us to the encounter, helping us through the school of leaders, equipping us. It is because preaching through here, he is viti hazita ja, for real, for real. Preaching hapa hivyo. But when all of us take and consider God's will and God's purpose and God's priority, na tuipatie kipao mbele. Amen? Taking the gospel to the nations, then, tutakuwa ibada ikianza inakuwa sharp na watu wengine wanaka inji. Because we have thousands and thousands of people are living around us and in our environs. Buona sifuwe sana. The clock tells me 
my time is up. But self-control, as in the book of Acts chapter 38, will help us to respond to God's will. Self-control, standing, exercising our stand. Amen? Standing for that, that what we know. Standing for the truth. Self-control. We pray that the steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases will be our portion. The steadfast love of the Lord that never ceases will be our portion. Even as we consider uh, the will of God being our priority. Amen? Because the word of God gives us authority. The word of God helps us to be obedient to the word of God, to the word of truth. Amen? So, love for one another, love for God helps us. The prayer will is key, forgiveness, humility, word of God, compassion, seeking God first, self-control and being obedient and trusting the word of God to give us the authority. We'll be able to accomplish and to fulfill that what God calls us for. And so, when we embark in our theme of the year, redigging the wells of our forefathers, redigging the wells of go ye, the well of going to win souls, the well of going to seeking the lost, the Lord will be with us and we'll see the result. And I pray, even as we come to the end of our, our prayer and fasting our session, we'll have a harvest and even harvest that will last for God's glory. The Lord bless us. We're so grateful to God for the opportunity to listen to his word and allowing God to minister to us. And I pray that uh, by God's grace, we will be able to be good stewards of what God has committed to us. Could we pray? Our Father, we're so grateful and we are glad that you are Lord and you love us with an everlasting love. Father, we bless you that in our midst we could have those of us with issues. We pray that until you come through for us because you love us. Be glorified. This is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name.